Hello, and welcome to Timeout from IDT, the number one world leader in timing solutions. My name is Sam Staker, and I'm a field applications engineer for IDT. And today we're going to talk about an important question. What is phase jitter? Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the terminology involved. Jitter can be very confusing. There's a lot of terms. Engineers use them in different ways depending upon different applications, phase jitter, phase noise, and others. But before we get into phase jitter and phase noise, let's take a step back and talk about jitter. The easiest place to understand jitter and the easiest place to start off is the time domain. And we'll look at an ideal clock signal versus a real world clock signal. The picture on the top is an ideal clock. The signal period T is constant. The clock frequency, which is the reciprocal of time, is also constant. The rise and fall time is constant and does not change. Obviously, this waveform is only seen in textbooks. On the bottom is a picture of a real world clock signal. The signal period varies, the frequency changes, the rise and fall time varies. This is the kind of clock signal that engineers see on oscilloscopes in their systems today. Jitter very simply is the deviation in time from the ideal reference clock. The picture on the top has no jitter, the picture on the bottom has jitter. If you remember from engineering and math, if you do a Fourier transform, you can take a signal and move it from the time domain to the frequency domain. If you do a Fourier transform on that top signal, which is the signal without jitter, you'll get a nice looking pulse that's represented here. That pulse is of amplitude A, which corresponds to the amplitude of a clock signal. But instead of a clock signal that goes up and down, you'll get a, a pulse that is at the location of that clock frequency. Really what you get in the real world though is what's on the bottom. If you do a Fourier transform on a real world, real world clock, you'll get something that looks like the picture on the bottom right. Obviously most of the energy will be at that main frequency that's represented by the peak, but instead of dropping off dramatically after that, it'll drop off to the left and to the right, and those drop-offs those ramps are really defined by the error in that signal, the fluctuations in amplitude, the fluctuations in phase. So phase noise is the unintentional phase modulation on that specific carrier frequency. It's the noise on the clock. The easiest way to think about it, it's jitter, but it's jitter in the frequency domain instead of time domain. So if we look at this frequency domain jitter, we'll map it out in what we call a phase noise plot, and that is represented here. This is a specific example of a 100 megahertz carrier frequency or 100 megahertz operating frequency, which is the peak uh, that's centered there in the middle of this graph. Now, on specific applications, engineers may or may not care about this entire graph. And high-speed data comms, which is really a huge growing segment for these devices, they're only going to look at a very small portion of that graph. And that's represented by that gray box down on the right. That frequency, that box, that range is offset from that 100 megahertz carrier. So that's a frequency offset range uh, frequency offset mask, or we'll also call it a jitter mask. So we'll zoom on that, zoom in on that here in the next slide. Zooming in on that very specific portion of the phase noise plot, here's an example of a frequency window that's 12 kilohertz to 20 megahertz offset from that 100 megahertz operating or carrier frequency. So if you take this curve and you integrate the area under that curve of a frequency range from F1 to F2 of 100.012 megahertz up to F2 of 120 megahertz, the number that comes out of that integration is what we call the RMS phase jitter. And we care about these specific windows of jitter because that's what's driving these high-speed communication systems. So whether you're Sonnet or Gigabit Ethernet or PCI Express, you'll have a specific offset. You'll have a specific uh, jitter mask, a specific window of noise that you care about. 
and you'll take that range, you'll integrate it, and the number that comes out of that is the RMS phase jitter. Now, you can do the math that's shown on the previous slide, or you can take the easy way out. Luckily, we have electronic equipment that will make these measurements for us fairly easily. So what you see on the slide there is a picture of a spectrum analyzer. So we've taken the spectrum analyzer, we've hooked it up to a clock source that's 155.52 megahertz, and we've zoomed in on a window 12 kilohertz to 20 megahertz to the right of that peak frequency. And the equipment will do the integration for us, which you can see on that picture. The numbers that you can see there are 245 femtoseconds of RMS phase shooter. And again, that phase shooter is 12 kilohertz to 20 megahertz offset from the 155.52 carrier. 20, 245 femtoseconds is world-class jitter performance, and this is done through our latest UFT universal frequency translator third generation clock generation device, industry-leading performance driving high-speed data communications. So now let's answer our question of what is phase jitter. It's a little bit complicated, but as you can see, it's not too involved coming up with the answer. Phase jitter, when people ask that, they're asking, what is your RMS phase jitter? And to come up with RMS phase jitter, we need to know what that carrier frequency is, what that operating frequency is, and we also need to have a well-defined offset range or jitter mask so we can integrate the area under that curve in the phase noise plot and come up with a number that's specific to the engineer's application. Also, in summary, why should we care? Low RMS phase jitter equals low bit error rates. This is critical for today's high-speed serial communications like 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gigabit Ethernet, PCI Gen 3, and others. So, for the latest in industry-leading ultra-low phase jitter clocks, please visit www.idt.com forward slash go forward slash clocks. Thanks for viewing today's video and thanks for considering IDT clock devices.